So you gave me a thousand likes in six hours, so we're gonna make this parallax happen in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Mind blown. First, a very, a very, a very exciting news. What are you? First, something new. I've integrated a 60 second fast tutorial at the beginning of this video for those of you who don't want to watch, you know, all the steps. Right after that 60 second tutorial begins the regular tutorial where you see all the steps. Before we begin though, Linode, the sponsor of this video, makes it easy to host your site, your app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. With one click apps like WordPress and Drupal, getting up and running is easy. With back end access to your server, customize options are all but limitless. A fully configurable DNS manager allows for you to easily switch your domain over to your new server, and SSL certificates can be installed for free using open source tools. So sign up using the link below to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. So a few days ago, I did a parallax tutorial in Figma, and you guys really wanted me to do the HTML and CSS. I required you to give me a thousand likes within 72 hours. You did it within six hours, which is awesome. So I'm here with that video to show you how to do that today. Now, one thing you guys didn't realize is I've already covered parallax in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript about three or four different times on this channel. In fact, I'm going to overlay those videos on the screen right here. And I show you in those videos, one of them, it shows you how to do parallax in just pure vanilla JavaScript and also how to do it with different libraries such as lax.js, which is what we're going to use. Um, also relics.js and also gsap with scroll magic. So I've already covered this, but you guys really wanted me to see, you know, do it in this context. So I'm going to deliver. All right. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Please leave a like. No, 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 no. First step is to get your HTML markup written, which is what I'm doing here, and there's a link to a code pen demo with all of that code. We really don't care about the HTML markup though for this fast too, because well, you're just interested in parallax. The next step is to write the CSS, and the goal at this point is just to get the layout looking exactly as you want it to on the device, and you're really not interested in anything to do with parallax at this point. Now for the parallax. I'm using lax.js as seen here, which is a three kilobyte solution for integrating parallax, and it's dead simple. You can import it through a CDN, and then you simply have to initialize it. And that's it, no more JavaScript code. To use lax.js, you simply add a class of lax to the element you want to animate, and then either use an attribute-based lax preset, or attribute-based lax properties like translate x or y, opacity, scale, skew, or rotate. The values you give these attributes gives you a lot of control over the type of movement that's applied to the given parallax effect. So I suggest just getting in there and experimenting with the values to see what they do. Exciting. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. I have a blank folder, almost full, it's almost blank. We have an images folder, as you can see, and it has a forest.png, a mountains.png, um, this could actually be a JPEG uh, just of this, but this is literally the same images that I exported during the prototyping portion of the video uh, that I did two days ago or a few days ago. Um, so I'm just keeping it quick and easy. You could probably do a lot more image optimization on this, um, but nonetheless, I will make this available, these files, so check the description. Uh, so what we wanna do is create, not inside of the images folder, but outside of it, an index.html exclamation point, and this is an M abbreviation. If you don't know what the heck that is, I uh, just check my channel. I did a brief crash course on M abbreviations. Basically it makes it easy, quick and easy to uh, type in HTML. We want to link up our style sheet. So it's main.css inside of a CSS folder. It doesn't exist, so let's create that. And then also main.sass. We'll use sass for this. So you're gonna need the sass extension. Um, we're also gonna use live reload. So if I, I uh, first click watch SAS. You're going to need that extension. Um, and then right click on index.html, open with live server. So those are the two extensions you're going to need. This is our very blank page that's showing us right now. And for those extensions, by the way, it's just the live SAS compiler and the live server. So you want to install both of those and just reload Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now. We're gonna get started with our HTML. It's very simple markup for this. Um, again, just to, to go back here, let me open up Adobe XD just so we can reference what we, um, oh, that's right, I didn't use Adobe XD, I used Figma. Let me open up Figma real quick. And this is our prototype that we created. 
And when you're doing HTML and CSS, by the way, it's not loaded yet. There it goes. Uh, you just have to think of everything in terms of blocks. So we have um, a navigation up here. That's a block. We have the individual logo. We have the menu. Um, then we have this H1 element for the title. Um, I decided to go against having this black line and just using this arrow instead. But our other blocks are just this graphic down, this mountains graphic and this tree graphic. Um, and then outside of that, we have this. So that's what we're going to design for and get our HTML for set up rather. So um, let's see here. We're going to have a container, an overall container to kind of house everything, you know, away from the browser or something like that. And, and then um, inside of there, we'll have a header. Inside of header, we're going to have our two elements. Remember the logo and the nav menu. So uh, the logo is going to be going nowhere. It's going to be class equals logo. And then just the name, which happens to be nature comp, as in company. Outside of that, we'll have a nav semantic element here. And then I'm not going to have an actual navigation. This is just a placeholder. If you want to learn how to do responsive navigation, you can completely find one of the many resources, even my own, on the internet for that. So I'm just going to have the image right here, which is in our images folder. And that's called, what is that called? Menu.svg. It's just the three, you know, the hamburger icon. And I'll just call this alt menu here. All right. After header, we have our H1, right? So our H1 says preserve nature. All right, and we're gonna give it a class of, uh, actually we're not gonna give it a class. We're gonna give it a class later when we deal with our, uh, our parallax stuff. Outside of that, we have our line and the arrow. So I decided just to use a div for that element and that is going to be called line, all right? And that's all it is for now, we will, actually add on a custom data attribute for the parallax stuff, but that's all we need for the line and the arrow. We'll use the uh, um, CSS after selector to get that uh, triangle going. Um, after that, that's it. So we have this inside the container. We're gonna end the container class there. And then we have the content that's gonna show up um, when a person scrolls down. And so we're just gonna put that in its own container as well. And I'm putting it in inside of its own container so that we can control um, the parallax effect of that element specifically. That's why I'm not putting it inside of here. So um, we're also gonna give this another class called secondary. That way we can kind of control it specifically. You'll see when we get when you get to that section. And we're gonna put in H2. This is just the type that we had strategic um, in the design. And then we put a, a subclass uh, P dot subtext and alliances again this is just the copy that i came up with we're going to do a paragraph here with lorem 30 for 30 character or 30 words of lorem ipsum text and we're just going to replicate that shift alt in the down arrow key and that's it that's all we need for oh no it's not i forgot we have our two images which are the mountain graphic and also the trees. So this is images forward slash mountains dot PNG. Really, this should just be a, a JPEG. Um, and then mountains for the alt here, and then class mountains. That's looking good. Um, let's replicate this trees, and this will be trees. No, it's called forest actually. There we go. And then. Um, we're having a class trees and um, I also referenced this. Actually, no, we can, we're good. I was gonna give these IDs, but we don't need them. We, we're not even referencing in JavaScript, so we're fine. Um, all right, and so that's it. And if we go back and we look at our very ugly site, this is what it looks like so far. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just position this here on the side so we can get a good idea of what it looks like um, in a mobile viewport, because that's what we're designing for. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We have our main.sass file right here. Um, make sure that's being watched, by the way, with that um, that extension that we have. And I'm importing at the top here the noble, N-O-B-I or nobile, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, font of 400 and 700 weight right here. Again, code pen will be available in the description if you want to copy and paste stuff. Uh, we have our body tag here. We're just going to set the margin to zero. Um, height is going to be 100 viewport height. Background is going to be 191919, and font family 
is nobile. All right, that's it so far. Not too exciting, is it? Um, we're also going to put um, all and as, as, as along, along with the uh, before and after on everything, we're going to set box sizing to border box so we don't have to deal with any calculations when we mess with padding and all that good stuff. Um, now let's mess with our container here. So padding is going to be 2EM um, all around. So it's going to move things around. Um, we're going to do width 100%. Actually, yeah, that's dumb. What am I doing? We're going to do height, 100 viewport height. All right, so that's pushing things down. Can't see anything yet, but don't worry. Um, actually, we can get that fixed up quite quickly just by addressing our mountains and trees. So mountains is a class and the trees are a class or applied to the two images. Position absolute because uh, we want them to stack on top of each other. And we also want to put Z index negative one. I know we still can't see them though, but we want the text that's on top of it to be visible. So we're doing negative one and width 100% to make these images responsive. Now, the reason we're not seeing our trees yet is because, uh, and, and the, you know, those two images, is because we need to set the top value because uh, we're using position absolute. So mountains, we're gonna say top uh, is zero. So there we go, we have our graphic starting to come along. And then our trees, we're gonna say top 18%. So you're wondering, how did I know 18%? Because I was literally just experimenting with this. I wanted to get to the right, you know, I wanted to show a certain amount of mountains and versus a certain amount of the trees. Uh, again, if we change this to like 10%, it brings it up even higher. So I'm just choosing 18%. Now, of course, there's no parallax because we haven't done that part yet. But let's go ahead and work up here, um, get this stuff looking correct in the content uh, that's sitting on top of it. So I. Uh, in our container, we're also going to have, we wanna reference specifically just the first container. So we can say at, we do and, and then if I can get it, there we go. First child, which means it'll select the first instance of the container. And we're going to say display grid. And we're gonna say grid template rows is 10%. So the grid template, the first row is up here. So I'm just saying 10% for the nav bar and then 30% for this preserve nature section. And then we can't see it yet, but there's also an arrow, um, the line arrow graphic, which, you know, if you see, if you look over here, it's this thing right here, this line arrow graphic, that is gonna be auto, there we go. So it kind of changes up things, but it helped me basically get the arrows situated in such a way that we can have it positioned and constructed down here later on. You'll see in a second. Um, now the H1 element itself, we're gonna say text align center. Oh man, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Text align center, um, margin top is 2EM. Font weight, we're gonna reset to normal because right now it's bold. All right, and then we're also going to, let's see here, font size, make it a little bit bigger and then line height uh, 0.9 em now by the way if you guys want to see what this looks like in, a, in the actual mobile browser control shift i to get a dev console and click on this all right so i think i'll just move everything right there okay so uh next up after that we have our paragraph elements inside of our container Line height, I'm just resetting this, one point, oh man, come on Gary. Line height, 1.5 EM. This is for the paragraph of text that's below. You can't really see this change. It's just kind of increasing the line height. And also the color is gonna be RGB, 194, 194, 194. If you're case you're wondering why I'm using that RGB, it's just only because I uh, hovered over it and changed it here and then Visual Studio Code automatically uses RGB values. Um, so that's that stuff right there. All right, um, outside of that, we have our line. So let's make that, let's construct the actual line. It's a line class, and we wanna use a line self end, and that's in conjunction with the CSS grid because it's a, a child element of the CSS grid. We have this element, which is the first 
row and then second rows here and then the grids at the end. We can't see this adjustment because we don't have the actual line and we're gonna apply that right now. So first, in order to get this line centered in the middle, we're just gonna take this div element and give it a width of like 50%. And then we're gonna say border right and we're gonna say one pixel solid and we're gonna say white. All right. And then we're gonna say height is 50%. There it goes. So we just gave it height and therefore we're able to see it. Margin bottom is 4EM. We're kind of pushing it away from the bottom a bit. And then we're gonna say position relative because this is gonna help us uh, position uh, the actual triangle. So the way we create the triangle, we're gonna put um, and after. So you can do before and after, and this is just a, a way for you to um, work with um, CSS and adding extra shapes and changes without having multiple divs. So you can just work off of the single same div to create something different in a sense. So the way you do that always is just put empty content and then we put position absolute. Width is zero, height is gonna be set to zero. And the way we create a triangle and if you just Google create CSS triangle, you'll find a, a lot of options. Some of them are old where it says create four divs. That's old, you don't need to do that. You only need one selector here really, um, or one HTML element. And we do it with border style. We say solid border width. We're gonna say the size, this is based on the direction of the arrow. Um, and right now we want to point down. So we put zero on the bottom axis. And the size of the arrow is based on these pixel values. So if you want it to be larger, you can increase them. Um, so now we're gonna say right. And I put negative 0.7 EM. Again, this was experimenting, trying to get to the center. And then bottom is negative two pixels. All right. Let me see what I did wrong. Uh, oh yeah, we need to get a color in there. So border color, we say white and then transparent three times. There we go. So if you wondered like, how did I know to get this? R really, there's actually like a CSS triangle generator. If you just Google it, you'll find it. And it has a little nice interface for you to create it. And then it just gives you the CSS output. That's how I did that. Um, so there we go. That's our arrow, basically what we designed in Figma. All right, so we're almost uh, done with a lot of this stuff. Let's get this stuff up, the header and all that stuff working. Um, so we'll come outside of here. We're gonna reference our header, element, display, flex, and then justify content space hyphen between that'll push them away from each other um, and then we have our silly little logo and that is color black text decoration none oh come on gary and then also font weight bold font size 1.1 em awesome um and then we only have just a couple more things. Uh, we have our H2 element, it's all screwed up. So let's get that working here. We're gonna say H2 and paragraph. Um, did I say white? No, no, we don't want that. There we go, just the H2 element. Uh, we're gonna say color white. There we go. And then uh, we're gonna address the H2 as well. We're gonna say font size, 3EM, margin zero and font weight normal. There we go. There we go. Um, and then also our subtext. I think this is our last element, by the way. Then we can get to the fun stuff. Subtext, margin top, zero. Font size needs to be bigger, 1.4 EM. And text transform, uppercase. All right. And finally, no, I was wrong. We need one more rule set it's called secondary. That's the class we atta attach to the container right here. 
and we're going to say margin top we're going to push that thing up by negative 3 em and that just helped with the alignment when I was dealing with figuring out uh, the position of it with um, our uh, parallax stuff. So that is it. Now, I did work in some media queries just to make it a little bit responsive. So for instance, when we push, when we, um, when the width of the, the viewport increases, watch what happens. It becomes a nightmare, right? Like this looks bad. So to fix that, um, what you want to do is you figure out, and this is pretty much standard for any um, responsive design. You get your developer, uh, your dev tools up here, whether that's in Firefox or Chrome, and you pull this out and you figure out at what point, at what pixel value right here is the layout breaking, like, or at what point should we change something in the CSS? So I would say right around this area, because we can't really see the area anymore, we need to push the mountains up and we need to push the tree line up. All right. And so what I did is I will show you the first query that media query that I put in was at minimum width 665 pixels. So we just readjust the top value for the trees in the mountains class. So now watch once we get to beyond 665, it's pushed up just like that. And you can keep on just doing that sequentially. So I had two more media queries for 930 and 1050 right here. And you'll see what happens when we, you know, keep doing that. Personally, I don't think this, I, uh, this, the, because we didn't design for a desktop when I was doing the previous video from a few days ago, I, we would need more content in here realistically to make this design work for desktop just because it looks a little bit rid ridiculous. So that's why we're just focusing on mobile only and the same concepts for parallax still apply um, regardless. So that's what I wanted to show. So we're gonna stick here in our mobile viewport. So right now this is fine, uh, it, it works, uh, but if we wanted to get that cool parallax effect, uh, we have several options. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's a lot of ways to approach parallax. You can go the pure vanilla JavaScript way if you want. Um, and you can also go through the third party scripts uh, and libraries route, which is what we're gonna do with lax.js. So uh, as you can see, we have um, this right here. This is the GitHub page for lax.js. Um, and you could see there's a bunch of uh, examples shows you how to install it if you want we're going to use the quick option right here a script source um, from a cdn and then it just tells you to initialize the plugin that's all that's the only javascript that we're going to use and this is a great script because it's very lightweight it's only 3kb minified and zipped all right so and it has a lot of options by the way um it tells you exactly how to use it for custom animations um, it shows you all the supported presets that it has and also attribute keys, which we will be using just a couple of those. So a lot of things you can do with this recommend it. good stuff. All right. So let's go back to our index.html. We're done with the CSS. We can close that out and we're going to first, um, I'm going to import the CDN and we're going to put that right here. So that's where it, you specify that and then we'll do some JavaScript down here. And that's all we're gonna do is just copy and paste that, um, the way to initialize it from the documentation. So this is all it is, all right? We don't have to do anything else, that is it. We only now deal with the HTML attribute values um, in terms of getting this working. So if we were to save it, again, nothing's happening because we're not doing anything. Um, again, nothing. So let's, First, focus on this preserve nature text, all right? The way I designed it in the, um, let's see, our little demo here, which is right here, is it, it, it kind of goes up and it fades out. All right, so what we do is that is, what is it? It's H1, it's this H1 element right here. So what we do is we apply to it a class of lax. So everything has to have a class of lax that you want to apply any type of parallax effect to. Um, then we can use um, the custom data attribute. 
what is it that we want to change? We want to change the Y value, the vertical value. We want it to, to um, go up. So we could say data hyphen lax hyphen translate hyphen Y. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from right here. It comes from the documentation where it presents to you all the custom attributes. So data lax translate Y, that's where that comes from, all right? we say equals and you put in with a lot of these you have uh, basically two parameters that are comma separated um, I'm gonna put zero zero here and then we're gonna say 400 and then negative 400 here so as you can see it has uh, changed the behavior of it it's actually moving faster than the rest of the page. And that's what creates that interesting parallax effect. Um, this first value is based on how long it will last. It's not like milliseconds. It, it has, it's, it's, it's a different value based on the amount that has been scrolled. Um, and then this value right here, the negative 400, is in which direction it's gonna go. So if I change this to 400, look how it stays. So you can experiment with this greatly. The greater this negative value, like 900, it's gonna fly off the page practically. Um, we could probably really make it fly off if we change this to like 3000. Oops. So look at that. I mean, it just goes instantly. So you have a lot of control over it. Um, we're just gonna leave it at 400. And if you also wanted it to fade out, which I kind of did in the mock-up, you can also add the data lax op opacity attribute and control it that way. We're gonna leave it like that for now though. Next up, we're going to have our line. So this line, we're just gonna have fade out. So we're gonna say, once again, class is lax. And then we have to add data hyphen lax hyphen opacity equals we're going to say zero and one, the opacity is one. And then we're say uh, for a duration of just 100 in, uh, instead of 400, so it's gonna fade out a little bit more quickly, it's gonna go to zero. So now watch. Ha! Did you not work? Why are you not working? Did I save it? Yes, I did. What is going on? Div class line. Oh, because I have two classes, I'm an idiot. There we go. Awesome, all right. So next up uh, we have, let's, let's work in the mountains here and the trees, the, the thing that really makes the effect come together. So we'll come down here to our two image sources and again, class, we're gonna add lax to both of those and then we're going to have after that um, data hyphen lax hyphen translate y equals again zero one here 400 and negative 100. So now we can see that this background mountains it's creating that effect already even without applying anything to the tree line because uh, the mountains themselves are changing up. And what I mean changing up, it's going at a different speed than the scroll speed, the default scroll speed. So we're, al we're already achieving this cool effect. Um, let's go ahead and add this, just copy this and paste it right here, and then change this up a little bit. We're gonna do uh, about negative 260. That's what I came up with. Again, I was just experimenting because we wanted it to, to kind of come up here a little bit faster. And then we need to get this, this whole block right here, moved up all the way up here. And it has to fade in from opacity zero. So that's the next step. I believe it's the final step as well. Um, so we're gonna say lax right here, cause we're gonna do the whole thing to this whole class right here. Cause it, it contains all this stuff. And then we're gonna say data hyphen lax hyphen translate y equals zero, zero, 400 and negative 600. And then we also want to add opacity, data hyphen lax, laxy hyphen uh, opacity equals zero, 
zero and 300 and then one. So it's, the opacity is going from zero to one. So here we are. We scroll and some, something's not right though. Oops, yeah, because I did that. There we go. Check that out. And that is pretty close to what we had in the actual Figma prototype. And if you wanted to make it like a smooth scroll, you could actually uh, make it so that when a person scrolls with it, it'll automatically kind of come to this anchor point or so, or this anchor and I, it'll smooth scroll. Or if you had like a side, one of those um, side navigations where it has like the dots, um, you click on it, then it will scroll automatically to the section. You could do that as well if you wish. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, once again, give me a like and also, most importantly, subscribe because I'm going to do a guitar playing reveal at 500,000 subscribers. We should be getting there very quickly. Subscribe, subscribe, just smash it all the time. All right, I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye. First, very exciting news. At the beginning of this tutorial... First, very exciting news. I have First, very exciting news. I have integrated a very fast 60 second version of this tutorial here shortly after me giving my spiel. For those of you who don't want to sit So now watch. Ha. Did you not work? Why are you not working? Did I save it? Yes, I did. What is going on? Oh, because I have two classes. I'm an idiot. First, a very exciting news. No, a very excite a a very exciting news.